In this video, what I want to do is introduce how to implement some of the sequential logic that we've been talking about thus far in the course inside of LogicWorks. So if you go inside LogicWorks and you put over here in the filter the keyword flip, you'll see the various flip-flop options that you have. So you can have various versions of the D flip-flop and I'll showcase each of those here. So this is one version. You have this version right here. You have this version here. This one here. And this version here. So you'll see you have five different versions of the D flip-flop. And they have various features, some of which make them a little bit more versatile than others. So you'll notice over here, this has the D input. Of course, all of them are going to have a D input. All of them have a Q output. But this one has some advantages some others don't, in that not only does it have Q, it also has Q prime. So you'll notice this one right here does not have a Q prime and this one here does not have a Q prime, this one here does not have a Q prime. Also, all of them will have a C input, that's where the clock input goes, but you'll notice that some of them have the option to do a set and a reset asynchronously. So this version right here is really one of the most complete D flip-flops that we have. This is also a very complete D flip-flop in that it has a set and a reset and those will be um, asynchronous. It will not wait on the clock input and you'll notice here these are sets and resets that are active low and these are sets and resets that are active high. And so this one is the one that's known as the D flip-flop. This one is known as D flip-flop with NIRS which is short for non-inverting reset and set. And so let's look at how one of these behaves. So let's go ahead and put in some binary switches. So I'm just going to search for BIN, binary switch, and I'm going to have one for the clock, one for my D input, one for a set, and one for a reset. So let me go ahead and label those for you. So this will be the set. This right here will be the D input. This will be our clock. And then right here, this will be the reset. Now, if you want to move switches around, I'm holding the, the shift button. That allows you to actually click and drag them. So if you select and then hold shift, that will allow you to drag. Otherwise, if you don't hold shift, all it does is transitions from 0 to 1. So this way we can separate out things a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and select wire. And I'm going to wire up my set into the set here. My D input will go right into the D. My clock right here into the C. And my reset right here into the R. I'll press escape. Now I'm going to click on each of these, make sure it's connected all the way into the pin that I didn't just get close and then not actually connect. So it looks like everything is connected. And so now what I'm going to put in is a binary probe so that I can actually watch my Q output. And so here I'm going to put my Q connected to there. So right now we see that this is at a logic 1. Why is that? Well, right now we have a 0 on our set. We have a 1 on our reset. Let's see what happens. You'll notice the reset is ignored so long as the set is at a 0. So in this case, the set 
takes priority over the reset. Now if I make my set a 1 and now down here I click my reset to 0 you'll notice that the reset does in fact uh, cause this to go to a 0. Okay, And now if we start at 0 and neither the set nor the reset are zeros, so we're not using either of the asynchronous inputs. Now, on each clock event, I can take the D input and clock it through. So you'll notice I'm going to go from 0 to 1. So the 0 to 1 creates a rising edge. So this is a rising edge triggered flip flop, and it took in the 1 that I had there. I can clock in another 1. Now I'm going to put my D down to 0 and I clocked in the zero and so that is behaving just like a D flip-flop as you would expect comes on in. Now this other version of the D flip-flop will behave exactly the same with the one difference being that the S and the R will be active high and so this will work exactly the same so if we were to wire this up exactly the same that's what we would have. This D flip-flop right here does not allow an asynchronous reset or an asynchronous set. So whatever you clock in on D, that's what you're going to get coming out. And so um, when we get into project two, I will want to be able to do a reset on it. So this will not be a good option for you if you choose um, to do D flip flops on the project. This one here has an asynchronous reset but you notice that it does not have an asynchronous set which may be fine if you want your default value to be um, a zero so when you want to start out the condition you want it at zero that's perfectly fine you may not need an asynchronous set you'll notice right here that you only have the Q output you do not have the Q prime okay so these are our D flip-flop options. This one right here, I will also show you. So notice that it has the D input, the C input as we expect, the Q output, the asynchronous reset. This one also has an enable. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to swap out this flip-flop and I'm gonna move that one in its place so you can see what the enable actually does. So here, I'm going to connect this. The D input is there. The clock is there. And since we don't have a set, I'm going to go ahead and just select this whole line right here and delete all that. And so we don't have a set. So I'll press Shift to select that so I can delete it. And what I'm going to add in is an enable line. So I'm going to put in a binary switch that's going to be my enable. So I will put that right in here so I can route that. And so I'll give that a name. This is my enable. And what you will see when I connect that up is that the enable, if it is not enabled, all of our clock inputs basically get in ignored. So let's take a look at that. So in this case, we've got a one um, going into the enable right now and we have not set up a reset this is still high impedance because this wire is not connected over there and right now we are not resetting we haven't clocked anything through and so this is an X because it's unknown at this point what should be coming out of the flip-flop so normally what we would do is go ahead and hit the reset and so now we're doing that and that is sending us a zero as our start. And so now we have enabled this. And so if we go ahead and put in a one for our D input, now we can clock that through, put in a zero for our D input, we can clock that through. Now, look what happens if I disable the clock. So the enable line is now a zero. I'm gonna try to clock in a one right here on my D input and you'll notice that this clock is completely ignored but then as soon as I re-enable it now the next clock is allowed to go on through and that means it does pull in the D so we have seen some examples in our lecture slides 
where we use the CE input and that is exactly what this enable is doing for us. It's behaving like the clock enable or chip enable that we talked about. So if you don't have that enable set like we don't have here, the clock is not enabled and so the D input is completely ignored whenever there's a clock event but you'll notice that the reset can still do its work so regardless of whether you have set or cleared the enable line the reset asynchronous reset line here does still work okay so those are your different options for the D flip-flop now let's take a look at some of our other flip-flops so let's go ahead and clear out our D flip-flops here and let's see what else we have so if we go to flip we've seen the D flip-flops there's not a whole lot of other options we have a couple JK flip-flops so here's one JK option and here is the other JK option and so in this case these are both basically the same the only difference is going to be the S and the R here are active at zero and the S and R here are active at one but the J and the K input and the C for the clock are exactly the same and then we have Q and Q prime coming out so those are your two options for JK and then we also have T flip-flops so in this case the T flip-flop our only option there has an active low reset it does not output the Q prime and so if you need the Q prime you would have to put in an inverter gate and we just have the T input and the clock input there you'll notice that there is not an SR flip-flop and the main reason for that as we will see shortly in the class is that the logic for a JK flip-flop is always going to be equally as simple or even simpler than the SR and the reason for that is because you get a couple more don't cares in there and so that allows us to have a lot simpler logic okay so we can wire these up and see exactly what they do so I'm gonna wire up the T flip-flop down here and you can see that so I'm gonna put in some binary switches and binary probes so here I'm going to put in my T, my clock, my reset, and so here we go. Let's just put in a T and a clock and a reset. Normally I would have you label all those, um, but in the interest of time we're just going to quickly make some of these examples right here and you can see with such a simple circuit exactly where everything is wired so right now our reset is low so that is why this did take on that zero value and so now I'm going to turn off my reset or disable it by putting a one there so now my asynchronous reset is no longer active and so in this case with my T a zero I can just clock in clock in clock in and nothing's gonna happen because I'm not toggling I'm just maintaining that zero value now when I put my T up to a one and I clock it in notice this clocked in on the falling edge so there we go we're clocking in and every clock event it is toggling the output queue so that's the T flip-flop and then up here with the JK flip-flop I'm gonna do this one which is going to be active when the S and the R are logic one so let's go ahead and put in some binary switches so here's one for J for the clock for K here's one for R I'll put in one for S okay so I'll just since there's so many inputs here I'll name all these so that's J here I'll give this one a name this is the clock and here's K and then I'll give this the name reset and this one I'll call preset and so let's go ahead and wire each of those in so this is my set 
here's my J, here's my clock, here's my K, and there's my oops, reset. So right there, that didn't get all the way in. So now we've got it all the way connected up. Okay, and I'm just going to clean that up a little bit using the lightning. I've got a, a funky kind of loop in there. So, oops. There we go. So that should have connected this all the way through. It did. Very good. So now let's put a binary probe on there. And that's going to help us to monitor our Q output here. So right now you'll notice that it doesn't know what to do. That's because both our preset and our reset are at zero. So now if we put our reset up to one, that reset it to zero. And if we put our preset up to one, you'll notice again the preset or the set right here forcing it to logic one does override the asynchronous reset. So we can sit here and assert the reset, but so long as the preset is set, that's going to hold this at a one. Now if I turn this off, now my reset did take over after this was turned off. So preset trumps the reset. Now, if all you want to do is have a reset and you don't want the preset, what you can do in this case is you can look for a ground. So we'll just say GND. And instead of having a switch there, we will just connect the ground to our set. So in this case, if you never wanted to set the output, you only wanted to have a reset, then you put this to ground, this is never enabled. If you were using this kind of a JK flip-flop, what you would do is put in a plus 5 volts, and so that gets you a constant 1. So if you wanted to disable the set, you can just put in a plus 5V, and then connect your reset to a switch, as you would like. So, let's go ahead and work through this and clock in some values. So right now we're starting at zero. So if we want to set this to a one, we can do J at zero, K, or sorry, J at one, K at zero, and then we can go ahead and clock that in. But we're going to have to turn off our asynchronous reset, so we're going to put that back down to zero so that the synchronous inputs from the clock can now be pulled on in. And so in this case, rising edge, falling edge. So notice the JK flip-flop is falling edge triggered just like the T flip-flop we just saw a few moments ago. So in this case we are setting. We can toggle. So if we do J and K at 1 that'll toggle every time. If we do 0 for J and 1 for K that's going to be a reset so that's going to keep it 0 every time. If we put in 0 and 0 that's going to maintain. Okay, so if we clock in and make that a one, now at back to zero, zero, it is maintaining that one. So that is how you can use a JK flip flop. So this is our first video of using logic works for sequential logic. In the next video, what I will be doing is building the up down counter that we derived in our lecture and you will be able to see how that can be implemented using the flip-flops that we have talked about in class. Thank you for watching.